Okay, everyone knows we have to brush our teeth, but amazingly that's usually where the conversation stops. We're just threatened with consequences. If you don't brush your teeth or maintain your oral health, you'll be punished with pain, bad breath, and losing your teeth eventually. And that's wild to me, because framing it negatively like that is only half the story. Because if you brush your teeth with toothpaste that has fluoride in it, you're not just cleaning your mouth, you're actually changing the chemistry of your teeth, taking these rocks in your face and bolstering their construction with more resilient materials. And if you give me a few minutes, I'll take you through the mechanism that allows that to happen. Today, let's talk about how fluoride gives your teeth a kind of chemical armor plating. And let's roll with the basics then. By themselves, teeth are pretty complicated to talk about. I mean, it's bonkers that the pliable, mushy cells that make you up can even build literal rocks inside your face, let alone ones as complex as your teeth and jaw. But for now, let's cut away from the majority of your tooth composition and focus on the top layer, the enamel. Now, I'm about to massively oversimplify this, but I promise that one day, once I've read enough to get over my bad case of dumb guy disease, I'm gonna make a whole video about the complex processes that add up to form your bones and teeth. But for now, at the micro level, the enamel of your teeth is formed by little column-shaped cells called ameloblasts. Their job during tooth development is to deposit a bunch of proteins. These little pieces get built one layer at a time and mineralize, becoming rock hard. Literally. The final mineral material that makes up your enamel is called hydroxyapatite, and little hexagonal-ish columns of this material all interlink to make the hard layer of enamel on your teeth. Fun fact here, tooth enamel is actually the hardest mineral in your body, but hard doesn't instantly mean resilient. Because while hydroxyapatite is tough, it has one critical weakness. Well, actually a bunch of critical weaknesses, but you know, let's go with the one major one for the purpose of this video. It dissolves in acid. Well, I mean, a lot of materials dissolve in acid, and therefore this barely qualifies as a real weakness. But given how much the pH of your saliva can shift, how it can move from acid to alkaline and back again throughout the scope of a normal day, it becomes a weakness over time. Saliva isn't the enemy here, though. If anything, it creates the conditions that help repair tooth damage as well. No, instead, hydroxyapatite gets attacked by a bad relationship with bacteria. Your teeth break down food as you chew it, that's literally what chewing is. And therefore, your enamel comes in close contact with everything you eat. A lot of that food too gets dissolved in your saliva, and really small bits of it hang around on your teeth well after you've finished eating. But you brush your teeth every day, so you don't need me to explain that bit to you. You're not the only living thing eating the food in your mouth, though. There are all sorts of bacteria in your spit feasting on the table scraps left caught in your teeth. But don't freak out or anything, that's all fine and natural, unless too many fermentable carbohydrates become part of that equation. That is, if there's too much sugar or too many carbs hanging out on your teeth, then things start to shift towards the bad side of this equation. Bacteria obviously love sugar, most living things do. It's the simplest thing to break down into energy, and therefore the best way to get a lot of energy very quickly. The more sugar there is, the more bacteria metabolize it, and divide, and metabolize it again, growing on your teeth over time. And a lot of bacteria in your teeth break down sugar in a way that produces acid on the back end. That's the word fermentable in fermentable carbohydrates. I'll get into that later, but probably not even in this video. As bacteria grow and divide, they form a biofilm on your teeth. That's a major constituent of the plaque that you brush off your teeth every day. If it's just like left there though, that plaque releases acid into the surrounding environment as more and more carbohydrates get digested. The critical point happens when that pH gets to about 5.5 or lower, then the hydroxyapatite crystals start to break down and dissolve. And let's roll back into physical chemistry for a second. Check out this crystal. You got a bunch of calcium ions and a bunch of phosphate ions in there, and some hydroxyl groups as well. Hence the hydroxy and hydroxyapatite. As conditions become more acidic, this breaks down, allowing calcium ions and phosphate ions to hang out in the surrounding fluid. But as pH pops back up, those ions generally fall back into the crystal structure in a process called remineralization. This is a two-sided equation. Demineralization in acidic conditions, remineralization in more neutral to alkaline conditions. And it's important to keep in mind that a lot of processes in biology aren't binary. It's not that you drink a can of soda and cause instant permanent damage to your teeth. No, these processes are cyclical and happen on a gradient. 
Your teeth do get damaged though if over time conditions around them favor the breakdown of hydroxyapatite versus the remineralization of it. That is if your teeth do demineralization more than remineralization. Eventually this equation goes from cracks to cavities to much worse. Therefore, you brush your teeth twice a day to keep your teeth clean of that plaque, and also to push the balance of that equation back towards remineralization so that you never get to the much worse phase of things. And now we finally start getting into the cool part, because if you brush your teeth with fluoride-enriched toothpaste, which most of you are, or consume water with fluoride ions in it, you can push the equation even further. Because back in that moment when your enamel is putting itself back together, back during remineralization, if there are fluoride ions present in your saliva, they're going to swoop in and replace those hydroxyl group in the crystal making an entirely different compound. Flora appetite. Yeah, it's like appetite but with more fluorine. Names, right? Flora appetite rules because it's way more resistant to being dissolved in acidic conditions. So even if that pH balance gets pushed more towards demineralization, the areas of your teeth where flora appetite has taken over won't break down as much and therefore your teeth will be able to resist better when the conditions become more acidic. And again, this is a process, not a binary switch. This shift takes time and does not last forever. But it's one way people can make being alive a little easier by keeping people's teeth from decaying super quickly. But this begs the question, why is flora appetite more resistant to acid? And honestly, in my research, I couldn't land on a conclusive answer. It could be that, as an atom, fluorine is extremely reactive and electronegative, and therefore forms way stronger bonds that acid just can't touch. It could also be because flora appetite is more likely to form larger crystals that are harder to attack. I mean, heck, it could be both of those things at the same time, or a combination of the two, like 60-40. But what I am confident about though is, the moment I put this video out, an extremely kind and patient person with more experience in physical chemistry than me will bombard this video with a clear explanation of the right answer. I mean, sometimes the fastest way to get the best answer to a question is simply to be wrong on the internet. Once I have a more definitive explanation, I'll have it updated in the blog post I have linked below. I'm always going to have a more definitive blog post on this subject that explores way more than the video, because it's kind of impossible to explore these really complicated subjects in a 10 minute-ish YouTube video, so please make sure you check that out at my website, clockwork.show. The real purpose of these videos is to spark your curiosity so you can explore the complexities of this subject, not so much to give you a definitive answer. But with that tangent out of the way, it's also important to maintain the right balance of fluoride ions in your mouth. The information I've laid out here probably makes it seem like we can just keep upping the concentration of fluoride ions until we replace our tooth enamel entirely with flora appetite and be done with cavities forever. But too much fluoride will lead to dark patches on your teeth and eventually cause tooth damage over time from too high a concentration of flora appetite. Oh, and overfluorinated water is actually toxic in a high concentration. Well, that's also kind of important. Either way, it's still incredible that despite how complex our chemistry is, we can still change it a little to get small benefits. The smallest mechanisms in life are all about balance and gradients, not binary switches. Life is fuzzy at the edges, but it's those edges where the best discoveries can be made. So in this video, we learned a really simplified view of how your tooth enamel is formed and about the column structure of your enamel. We also learned about the crystal making up those columns, hydroxyapatite, and how it can break down in specific conditions caused by the presence of bacteria and fermentable carbohydrates, i.e. acidic conditions. Then we discovered how, like a lot of processes in life, this is a reversible equation in a constant state of ebbing and flowing. We then learned that we can hack this breakdown process by having fluoride ions present in our saliva to form a new material, flora appetite. This new crystal resists the breakdown processes a bit more and therefore helps your teeth from breaking down entirely, giving your oral health a little bit of an edge. But ultimately, what I hope you took away from this video is how malleable your chemistry is. It's genuinely awesome that we can figure out these small little changes in our makeup that makes being alive just a little bit easier. It's incremental changes like this that increase life expectancy and build civilization to new heights. This is why every discovery we make in biochem matters, because every new piece of knowledge compounds and leads to more momentum for even more knowledge. And I hope that these little discoveries help you find life to be even more beautiful. Thank you. And again, thank you so much for watching. 
If you like this video, please subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Every little thing helps this channel get out of these beginning stages. I'm currently putting these videos out monthly to ensure that I have enough time to fact check properly, but I'm building up to start a bi-weekly release schedule later this year. Feel free to check out our website, clockwork.show, for a more in-depth post about this process, or check out at this underscore clockwork on Twitter, where I cite my sources and accept criticism from the brilliant people on Science Twitter. I also have a Patreon and PayPal page if you want to help ensure this kind of content keeps getting produced. Every little bit helps as we get the momentum built up on this channel. Either way, I cannot express enough how much I appreciate your time for sticking it out to the very end of this video. And as always, I like to leave you with peace, love, and histidines. Everyone be well. Thank you so much.